Hello everyone, welcome to the week 7 of Business Management Capstone class. We're almost halfway through the course already. Now I realized last week, at the beginning of the video, I said I'm going to try to keep it short and then, as you are well aware, it ended up being probably one of the longest videos. So this week I'm truly going to try to keep it a lot shorter than last week. So I'm going to just dive right into the week 7 module. Assignment summary for this week. Of course you're watching the overview video right now. You want to read Chapter 5, review the PowerPoint presentation for Chapter 5, the Course Participation Discussion Board, the Chapter 5 Learn Smart, the Case Study, which is Apple in 2015, a Global Simulation, this is a new assignment, the Three-Year Strategy Plan for Years 9 through 11, Global Simulation Year 9 Report, and the Global Simulation Decisions for Year 9. And then last but not least, the quiz on Chapter 5. I'm going to go ahead and scroll down. Of course, you have your course content within Module 7 that you should review. Next, you have the course participation, which is competitive strategies. You will be choosing a company, and then you will have to decide what competitive strategy is related to that uh, organization. And then you have to explain your answer. You just don't want to put, all oh, it's a low-cost provider, and that's it. You have to explain why you believe that is the case. And of course, as always, review the other post and provide a comment on at least two other posts. The replies must be engaging and relevant. Majority of all of you are doing so, but not every single person. So keep in mind, this is when we're getting into the course where grading is going to get harder. You know, so if you just put, I agree, great job, you know, that doesn't count anymore. So you have to, when you reply, it has to be meaningful. Next, we have the Learn Smart for Chapter 5, the quiz for 5, and then we have the case study. One part that I left out about the case study, and I apologize for it, last week, was you have to read the actual case study at the back of the e-text, and then you go ahead and access the case study link as for this one, the case study Apple. So I do apologize for that. Uh, I know I received several emails about it. So keep in mind, make sure you read the case study at the back of the e-text and then go ahead and access the link. Next, we have the new assignment. So you have not completed an assignment like this so far within the course. This is the Globus Simulation 3-Year Strategic Plan. This is within Globus. Okay, so obviously the directions I have will step you through completing the 3-Year Strategic Plan. So let me just peek into Globus real quick here. Okay, within your corporate lobby, if you click on the assignments arrow, it's going to expand the list. Is your three-year strategic plan. This is where you're going to be actually completing the assignment. You're going to be doing a three-year strategic plan for years 9 through 11. And then once we get to year 12, you're going to be completing for year 12 through 14. So currently, you're going to be doing it from 9 through 11 and then down the road, 12 through 14. If you take the time and you read it, review the directions for this assignment, it's going to be straightforward and you should do very well because we're already going into year nine. So you should have a great handle on Globus and, and also your strategy for your company by now. To me, the importance of this assignment is to make, make you look in the future of how your company could grow. So let's jump back to Blackboard. Okay, so the other assignments that we have is the year nine report. Everyone's familiar with reports, so I'm not going to go on and on. Majority of the companies are just knocking out the ballpark. With that said, make sure you're mixing up the format. I don't want to see the same format every um, week here. You know, the same cover page, the same data, you know, so make sure you're spending time on it. And some of you who are not even close, you know, keep in mind, I'm going to start grading even harder on you because by now you should know what I'm looking for. I always make comments. If you disagree with the comments or if you have a question about any of the comments please reach out to me that's what i'm here for last but not least is the year nine decisions as you can see the globus assignments i put them in order and this would be my preference not the order you have to complete them in the strategic plan first then the year nine report and then the decisions if you go in that order the decisions should be easy because you already know what you're looking to do based on the strategic plan and the year nine report. So that would be my preference, but you can complete the assignments any which way you want. Let's go ahead and jump into Globus and look at the outcome from year eight. 
Looking at the year eight scoreboard, now we have a competition. From first to last is only separated by 24 points from last year. So if you look at it real quickly, and this is only the year eight scoreboard, not the overall, but company I is at 106. Company A is at 84. Now you say, well, that's still a big stretch, but then look at company F. They made a plus 34 change in one year. So this is fantastic. I don't think I've ever had a capstone class that there wasn't already like one or two teams that are kind of already been out of the uh, running. But great job, everyone. This this simulation um, is wide open for any company still to win if you put in the work and do the research. So um, I do ha absolutely have to commend Company F for that huge leap. They are one of the teams I was you know, deeply concerned about. And then even Company A, uh, in ninth place, you know, I, I was a little worried about them too. But they even gained plus six um, in year six. So keep up the fantastic work. Obviously, Company I is leading the charge, and you have Company B. They've been pretty much you know, steady up top the whole way. So let's see if you can knock them off. Let me go ahead and glance at the game to date scoreboard. Then again, we have Company I at 107, Company B at 102. So I don't want to call it a solid lead because, as you know, you could jump pretty far in one year. So I'd say Company I has a little bit of a comfortable lead. Um, but if they make one misstep, Company B will knock them off. I, absolutely, I would think. As you can see, though, no one's running away with it anymore. Even Company A at 83, still plenty of time to catch up. So great job. You're definitely going to be making it interesting all the way to the end. Let's take a look at earnings per share, return on equity, and stock price. Earnings per share, everyone met expectations except Company A and Company G. But I believe both of those are going to be fine. It looks like you're, you're moving in the right direction. Company A went from 169 in year 7 to 267 in year 8. And then it looks like Company um, G went to 223 to 290. So keep it up. You're, you're right there, so don't be discouraged um, at all. And then Company I, I have to say, great job. You know, you're almost, well, besides Company B, you're almost double everyone else. So B's right there knocking on your door. Return on equity. Everyone met expectations. I believe this is the first time this has ever happened, even counting the practice round. So great job. I mean, I'm almost at a loss of words. Uh, you know, you, everyone kind of caught me off guard with the um, scoreboard alone, to how close it is now. I hate to say it, but a couple of teams I, I didn't think they were ever going to come back. So fantastic. Company B is leading the charge here at 41.1. Company I is not very far behind at 36.9. But then you do have Company E at 38.2. So it looks like Company E is going to try to make a, a run for it too. Stock price. Year 8. Then again, everyone has met expectations. So fantastic. Uh, company I is still leading the charge at 198. But Company B is not that far behind at 159. So fantastic. I want to keep it up. So let's go ahead and take a look at credit rating image. Credit rating, everyone's at A, only one team at A minus, which is E. I believe that's fine. It's not going to hurt you at all. Image rating, everyone met expectation besides company A, F, and G. And that might be strategy. Maybe they're not that worried about image rating. So I'm not taking that as a negative. You do have to watch it. You don't want to dip too low, though. And company D has the highest at 86. Okay, so let's go ahead and look at the comparative competitive efforts for North America. Keep in mind, obviously, there's more regions than North America. So I just covered one, just to give you kind of a gist of how you should be viewing this data. So price for the uh, camera segment. The average is 340. So if I'm glancing across, one team sticks out to me is Company B. They're at 450. And if you heard me already state, Company B's in the running. So even though... It, uh, previous videos, I was saying, well, watch your price, watch your price. Company B is going for it. It looks like Company C and Company F, well, Company F's 400, Company C's 350. So other companies are going for a higher one. Oh, I, and I missed Company A at 389. So let's look at the difference here real quickly. So the PQ rating, it looks like Company H has the highest PQ rating at 6.4. Then we have Company C at 6.3, B at 5.9, and A at 5.9. 
might ask yourself, well, how is Company B selling for 450 with a lesser PQ rating than Company H at 6.4? Different models we have on average, it's like 2.7, so roughly almost three. The highest one is Company I with four models. The warranty period looks like it's very similar to the previous years, except for Company F has 360 a day warranty period. And then we go all the way down to the bottom and look at the market share. And with the market share, Company D actually has the largest at 15%. So what I do is I glance all the way to the top, say, okay, 15%. What are you selling for? 295, 5.5 PQ rating. And now look at it's like Company B, who's selling at 450. They don't have 7.2 market share. Well, clearly they don't need as much if they're selling for high, right? So you got to find that sweet spot between the price and how much market share you're trying to capture. Okay, moving down to the drone segment. On average, the price is fifteen hundred, give or take. The highest price is Company H with seventeen fifty, and they have a PQ rating of six point two. So that their PQ rating is actually higher than anyone else. So maybe that's how they're justifying their price. The different models, on average, everyone has two, more or less. Only one team has one. So you may ask yourself, then Company A has a high price at sixteen twenty-five, but their PQ rating only is five point seven. So Company H is not that much higher, and a PQ rating six point two, which can refer to the price. So maybe that's where Company A may want to take a look at their price being that they don't have the highest PQ rating and actually not even close to the highest PQ rating. So the warranty period, all about the same from last year, more or less. And then we go down to the market share. It looks like G has the highest market share at 13.2. And they're selling for 1,000. They have the lowest, 4.1. So clearly they're going for the low end market and... It's working for them for a certain, to a certain degree. And then we have Company D at 12.4, which you're charging at 1375 So this is where you get, have to figure out where's that sweet spot for you. Where should you be selling? Are you going for the low-end market, the high-end market, or are you just in the middle? Any one of those strategies can win if you play it out right. Okay, this is all I had for this week. As always, please contact me if you have any questions. Take care.